Okay. Do either one of you want me to go through how you actually determine what the, the real bore length is? Because I can do that. You interested in that, Rod? Because I can see you and... Um, Okay, so I will. Um, let's just use the default flute that's, that um, shows up when you start up the program, this F-sharp flute. And I'm going to do a calculate and fill in all the values. Uh, let's pretend that we haven't drilled any holes in this flute yet. And we've measured the the playing frequency of this this blank, and we want to figure out what the the TSH factors and the bird fetish factors are. And I'm just going to invent numbers. They'll they'll be, make some sense, but they're not real numbers. So I I play that flute without any holes. That is. Um, now let's let's even make it a little longer. Let's make it five fifteen point five inches. Notice I put that value of the bore bore length in this yellow box. Perfectly fine. The program's going to use it. Typically, you change values in white boxes, and the program calculates yellow boxes. This is the one case where you're actually going to enter a value in the yellow box. And we play that flute, no holes, with instead of the bird you're going to use, say an index card um, to replace the bird. So it has no chimney, no vertical uh, face effect or anything like that. And you, you determine what the playing frequency is. So we've made that longer, but it doesn't have a bird. So, um, Instead of 370, uh, let's say it's, well, it might be 370 because no bird is going to make it sharper and the longer length is going to make it um, flatter. So let's just say it was 370. You enter that value down in this tuning frequency, no holes box. This is the part of the program that counts direction, calculates direction holes. So it does its calculations based upon there not being any holes, even though there's holes entered up here. So let's put 370 in for, for that tuning frequency, no holes. Now we're going to go up here and calculate the TSH factor. We're going to push that button and watch the, va the value in these two boxes change. So I do calculate TSH factor. It will always, at this point, change the bird um, fetish factor to 0.667. It's just a placeholder right now. Um, but notice how it changed the TSH factor. Um, now I'm going to This same flute, I'm going to put the bird on that we're going to use for, for tuning this flute. And let's say it changes the pitch um, 20 cents, which is about um, 5 hertz. So that's 365. Now I'm going to go up here and push, I'll make it so you can see, calculate the bird factor. And it didn't change the TSH factor, it changed the bird factor. So now those are two numbers that now will, for the no hole flute, um, have given that those two, two notes in, in pitch, either with no bird or with bird. And with the final flute now, you can see it's shorter because now we're applying the the whole correction. Okay, so now I know exactly how long that flute is going to be with those holes in place to get, make an F sharp flute. Is that clear to, to people?
Now, the reason why I want to do that is because once I have this in play, now I can start playing with that bore. So I know what, how the sound mechanism works. Suppose I wanted to, so I don't use an, uh, a length, an act, this lower sub A is actual length um, to bore ratio, diameter ratio of 18. Um, I use this guy here, which is the theoretical length that includes um, this K1 and K2. And I use the area of the bore, not the diameter. And I use a slightly different value for that. Um, but this is things you play with. Calculate. And that says I really, for the flute that I would make F sharp, I wouldn't make it 0.875. I would make it with a bore diameter of 1.029 or so. Or let's just make it one. The other thing is that I make a, a wide TSH. We have calculations here to um, do the, the TSH calculation. They're based upon uh, this number. Um, most people um, make your, your TSH width half of your... Um, your bore diameter, and I, I'm more dramatic. I make mine about 62% of it. And so it would be 0.62. So I've entered one here and 0.62. And now I can calculate again. And for me, if I were to make a one inch bore, with this same whole layout, I would want it to be, its final length would be 15.135. Uh, and it has um, very close to the um, ratio that I wanted, but a lot more than the standard ratio, a lot less, it's a lot bigger bore than what people use with an 18 to 1. So that's why I use it. I don't need to use it. If you want to know, and, and the reason why I have two factors there is because uh, in my mind, with a, not a huge amount of empirical evidence, these are independent. Um, the TSH factor is just a function of how you've made your flu and your splitting edge. Um, the bird fetish factor is how big your chimney is, how much of an angle the, the bird is over the TSH. Um, how hard you're blowing the flute, things like that. And so that you could change the design in one case and, and not have to worry about it in another to do um, design for a flute that you've never made before. So that's the whole rationale for for doing this, this stuff. But you don't have to. If you want to know just what the exact length is and you don't care, um, you can set this to one. Do the same thing that we had talked about here. Set that, uh, that was that 15.5. And that frequency was 365. We're just doing it with the bird on it. And calculate our bird factor. And now it's 0.79, which is also a reasonable value. And this, this, um, length again is going to be exact. You wouldn't want to be able to, you wouldn't be able to use the TSH factor and the, the fetish factor for other flutes, but it's, it's accurate for this flute. Um, and now just for completeness, I'll show you that, um, in fact, you don't care about any of this if, for hole layout. So look at the, um, the bottom hole here. And it's 5.5 inches up from the end of the flute. And we have a 15.2 inch flute. I'm going to change this um, fetish factor to, hell, let's make it 0.99. Going to go back and hit the calculate button. You'll notice this guy doesn't change. This guy does. 
still 5.5, but now the length of the flute um, is 14.7. So if you don't have any use for the length of the flute, don't bother calculating it. Um, just tune that flute um, by cutting off the end or um, if we use direction holes by increasing the size of the direction holes um, until it's in tune and then lay out the holes according to how you've calculated it here. Is that clear to, to everybody? And we won't talk about this again. Okay. Um, the other thing that I see people do is they've just done this calculation and it says, okay, I can drill these holes um, and make a flute. That's really not the, what, what the program was set up to do. This, the program calculates the relationship between all of these geometry patterns, uh, values, um, these tuning values, the hole diameter, the wall thickness, and the position on the flute. Um, each one of these holes, given the constraints that they're only responsible for one note, the tuning of one note, um, can be in a huge number of positions on this flute. And they're not constrained to positions. I'm, if I were to change this um, bottom hole to 3-5 and calculate it again, I still get a perfectly tuned flute, it just moved the hole. So the program doesn't have any logic built into it to say, um, which value do you like best? Do you want to make a flute that has irregularly spaced holes and the same size, um, has regularly spaced holes and different size holes, uh, regularly spaced and different size holes, it's up to you to decide what you want. Um, my typical method, because I really like flutes that are in tune into the second octave, at least to the minor third, um, is to take this number here, the minimum hole playing hole diameter, um, and plug that in for the bottom hole. It's really only the bottom hole um, that's relevant for this. But you're going. This isn't going to be a good strategy as you get into um, lower flutes where you can't make this bottom hole so big. And you see that I've got a huge space here. Um, I've got 1.8 inches between that and the next hole. So I've got to bring this hole down, the, the hole two. And so you just do it by um, making it bigger, bigger holes further down the flute smaller holes um, higher up on the flute. So um, now I have a big reach flute, but they're evenly spaced and these aren't too bad up here. Um, you might not be able to reach that. You might think it's fine for me. I'd probably make that flute, but again, you could make it, you could make them smaller. Um, and I'll make this 3.6. Now we have 1.4. Most people can reach that. And um, that's probably around 3. So you can see it's just an iterative process of um, changing them. The calculations are essentially instantaneous. So that's almost a equal hole size. That probably work for a flute, 1.4 inches here and about equal spacing here. Um, you can drop this down a little. Oop, wrong way. Uh, still pretty close. So those are the kinds of tweaks you would do to lay out your holes based upon um, getting a spacing that you like.
And you could even play with these a little bit until you had an equal spacing, um, at least of the three holes in the top group and the three holes in the bottom group. Okay, I'm open for questions now. That's all I, I, I felt I needed to discuss. Uh, and use your chat for questions, um, Joseph. Do you have any questions, Rod? No. Are we done with the session? How about you, Joe? Do you know where the chat is? So you can respond to me. Um, okay, one question. I'm I'm ready, Joe. And I I should also make a comment that um, this is the baby program. I also wrote the the big boy program, WI Designer. So when you start making flutes that have arbitrary tunings, have arbitrary fingering patterns, chromatic tunings, arbitrary bore, bore shapes, um, and you don't want to do all these tweaks, you want to just set a constraint that says, I want equal um, hole spacing, or I want these holes to be equally spaced, the bottom three holes, and I want the... Uh, top three holes to be equally spaced, but a different number. Um, the, those are called constraints in WI Designer. You set them and you push a button. And it says, okay, I can do that. Okay, so um, Joseph's asking about direction holes. And... So let's make this same flute with direction holes. And the answer to your the short answer to your question is it's always calculated from the end of the flute. So suppose I wanted direction holes um, in this F sharp flute. Um, and Two ways of thinking about direction holes. Maybe you just want them to be aesthetically pleasing, and so you don't really care how long the flute is um, around the direction holes, or you really have a um, a strange end flute or a, a slant end flute or something like that, or you just have a pretty part of the flute that you want to include in the um, it, pretty part of, of wood that you want to include in the flute. Let's do the simple one where um, it's really fairly arbitrary. So I'm going to, so now I'm down in the tuning direction holes, and I'm going to say that, so the program needs some information. You, you, so you, you, let's say I'm going to make a, with no holes um, in the flute at all, no direction holes bored in it, and I play that note, that it's going to be an E. So it's um, it's a full whole tone below, and I'm going to use direction holes. Um, I'm just going to hit the calculate button. What we're looking at here is this number fourteen six ninety seven. And now it's um, two and a quarter inches longer. If you want it to be longer than that even, um, drop this down even more and calculate. Now it's um, almost four inches longer. All of these numbers you saw changed. So the direction holes now are going to be um, four inches up from the bottom of the flute. And your first 
So this is from the end of the flute, not the direction holes. The direction holes are going to be four inches up from the end of the flute, from the foot. The first playing hole is going to be eight inches up from the bottom of the flute. So everything is from the bottom of the flute. Now, if you don't know where the bottom of that flute is, um, but you know what its frequency is here, you, you, you've played the flute, it, it, it has a, a burl end on it, like Brent Haynes makes on his flutes, then the program needs some additional information. It needs to know how to calculate the bore length, which means it needs the TSH factor and the bird fetish factor. So you need to take a flute that um, has a known length and, and the same uh, geometry to get those numbers. Then when you put this, the frequency that it plays, and you get some number here, um, it's going to be somewhere in all, all of the, the interesting pattern on the end of the flute, the burl end. Um, you know, subtract three inches from it and put a mark on the flute. That's your three inch offset to the end of the flute. And that, and so you would measure both your uh, direction holes and all the rest of your holes with the three inch offset um, from that mark you just made on the flute. So it accommodates all of that, but it needs that now the additional information uh, on how to calculate acoustic length, which it gets from the TSH factor and uh, the bird factor. Does that answer your question, Joseph? I sure wish. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The and to tell you the truth, I I rarely use uh, direction holes on my flutes. Um, I just I use them in special cases when I want a little brighter timbre. They they have a little bit higher frequency. They bring out the higher frequencies a little better. Than the shorter flute, but typically I don't like the um, the extra high frequencies. I'm, as you can see from my large bore diameters, I like a very mellow flute. Um, and I will. I've been recording this, so most of it, um, so I will be able to to post this. So that my other, my other uh, take home is that as you progress, if if you're technically minded and 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 a flutomat was written just to to be a kind of slam dunk, you can lay out the holes for a pentatonic minor uh, scale very quickly. Um, if you get more technical and you decide to um, get into those other complexities like chromatic tuning, um, non-cylindrical bores, and complex scale patterns, things like that, I really do recommend that you take a look at WI Designer. Um, to tell you the truth, I haven't used um, and a flute mat in a dozen years uh, because I always make chromatic flutes. I always make flutes that are tuned into the, the second octave and I always um, have, I almost never have a cylindrical bore. I always have some sort of bore taper in the flute. So that's why I wrote uh, WI Designer to accommodate all those things. But if this serves your needs, um, I'm pleased.
there's no other other questions, um, we'll call it a session. And you're welcome, Joseph and Rod. And we can do this again. I mean, it's easy for me to set up, and I'll try to figure out why you guys were muted. Because <laughs> um, you shouldn't have been. And then I just ran one of these um, a week ago, and the participants could, could talk just fine. Okay, gentlemen, have a good evening.